Siobhan Clark versus Tommy McCarthy, 10 rounds in the cruiserweight division. This is another requested video, so let's get into it. Let's start with Siobhan Clark. Seven wins, no losses, five wins by way of knockout. I've only seen Clark fight a handful of times, so for everyone who supports the channel from the UK, you know I love getting your perspective and insight on how you guys feel about him over there. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Clark has not fought a lot of fights. Made his professional debut in 2022, fought four times that year, won them all by stoppage. Even though he doesn't have a lot of fights, he came out of the gates fighting guys with way more wins and experience than him in the professional setting. So I don't see him being intimidated by McCarthy and the fights that he's fought in his record. Clark is strong. Uh, he's an imposing physical figure. He's got a big right hand, a clubbing hand at that. Punches with bad intentions. Man sits down on every punches when he decides to. When he fought uh, Israel Doofus, man, even though that fight went the distance, Clark knocked him down three or four times, if I remember correctly. And Doofus didn't know what to do, didn't know how to respond. He got beat up that fight. And every shot that Clark landed on him that stumbled him or wobbled him or made him drop to the canvas man it looked like it didn't just hurt but it hurt your feelings on top of it is that too it was the way how he breaks you down he's a physical guy and he's got power in both hands and you can see he's got that natural athleticism where things just look very easy for him the variation with his punches mixed with the power mixed with the speed man he he you can see why the potential is there for him, right? His uppercut is nice. He's inside the pocket fighting style is nice. He's got that punishing power combinations. He moves, some of his movements kind of remind me of Mike Tyson, man, right? How he sits on his punches and the subtle step changes, how he evade punches. And sometimes he does that old school type of defense where he bobs and ducks his whole body down, right? It's interesting to me, right? Because you have to have a certain level of athleticism to be able to keep your base and your composure and not stumble over your feet. You can duck and weave and fully squat down and not miss a beat. Takes a lot to do that. It might seem simple, but to do that in a real fight, man, it goes to show the athleticism and the talent that he is. Not everybody can do that, even though it's simple, Got to have a certain level and a strong base and core to be able to execute that and not miss a beat. In his most recent fight, he fought uh, Dukar, who does have a modest record, but he's also a guy who's been in there with some of the top in the division, like Chris William Smith, the champion now, been in there with Jordan Thompson, four notable names that people know. He's a tough opponent who used to do MMA, so you know he can take a shot. You know he's got a chin. If, you take, if you're fighting MMA, these guys are taking elbows, they're taking knees, so they got a chin. He's a tough opponent. Might not be as skilled or as explosive, but he's a tough opponent and a good test for an up-and-coming fighter like Clark. And I thought Clark was very patient in that fight, more patient than I've seen him in previous fights before. He was using his jab more than I've seen him before. A guy like him has a lot of power, that type of power where he, he only needs to connect one shots for the whole fight to change. And when you have that type of power, you can headhunt a lot and you can be dependent on that one shot. But I thought he genuinely took his time and also looked like he was having fun, right? He was laughing inside the ring, man. Some of the mannerisms, he would boom, hit a couple of piece combinations and he would walk off all cool. But he never let himself get too caught up in his work that he fumbled his technique the technique was solid through and through i remember a sequence i think it was the third round man where he hit Ducar with a jab to the body followed by a left hand followed by a right hand and it was so quick and so fluid i was like man that's beautiful like, that's beautiful work right to be able to mix your explosiveness athleticism and speed all in one it's beautiful when it does connect man so he has a lot of upside, a lot of skill. He's got the physical components, the physical gifts to have a lot of success, man. And he's also got the conditioning as well, too, because it didn't look like he slowed down against Dukar. I thought he paced himself very well, added more calculated pressure and a more strategic approach to it, and just kind of showed a different layer 
of his fighting style that he is still developing. But from what I've seen so far of him, man, I think he has a lot of upside, a lot of potential, and I think he can be a dangerous opponent. Seems like a fast learner to me inside the ring. Again, still only seven fights and this is his eighth fight. So going to be interesting to see how he handles McCarthy, but this is a guy that I think does have a lot of upside, you know, plus he's from Jamaica as well too. So, you know, you know, we're built strong out there, right? Let's talk about his opponent, Tommy McCarthy, 20 wins, five losses, 10 wins by way of knockout. Now McCarthy has fought the top guys in the division, right? I'm talking about Richard Riakpo in 2019, uh, Chris Billiam Smith twice. He's fought Fabio Turkey. And Michael Sislak was his most recent fight. He fought that last year. I think McCarthy is a good, solid boxer. More of a boxer than a puncher to me or a brawler. He has a long reach and knows how to use his reach to his advantage. I mean, he's a guy who can loop shots in without him being too close to you. He did that against Chris Billiam Smith the first time and did it again the second time. But in the second fight, man, where things was different than the first was it became a lot more physical. Right. Chris Billiam Smith had a great game plan in and he kind of neutralized the movement of McCarthy. Billiam Smith would come in one, two, and he would go and tie up. Right. He would be the one who would be at that mid distance range, getting his shots off and then moving in to tie him up. So McCarthy couldn't get off his shot. And it was a tactic that was tiring McCarthy out. If you can take away his movement and take away the stuff that he wants to do, man, it's tough for him to really gain momentum. And when you have someone who has a strategy as Billiam Smith did, it's hard for you to turn back that momentum and gain it back in your favor because every time you're on the ropes, boom, you get hit. You can't even move because he's tying you up. He's right in your face. And it got to a point where McCarthy you could see he was starting to get tired. And the more tired he was starting to get, the less fight that he had in him to get off the ropes, right? To get shots off on his own until he found himself when he was on the ropes, man. And Billiam Smith just let off a whole barrage of shots and most of them got through. And you could see the physicality of the fight that Chris Billiam Smith was imposing, man. McCarthy didn't like that. It tired him out. He couldn't respond because he was tired. He couldn't respond because he didn't have enough space to really you know, get busy. Didn't have enough space to get off his shots. And it just wore him down, caught him on the ropes. He found himself, ended up on the canvas, man, and it was it was over with. But it really goes to show how much of a physical fight can take out of you. In his most recent fight, he fought Mikhail Sislak. I'm someone who, man, from my experience in elite sports, man, body language matters, right? And I did not like his body language, man. He didn't look confident to me. Obviously, I'm just speculating from afar, but something just didn't look right to me. Right. And as the fight started, man, it just looked like he didn't really want to engage too much. He was gauging everything off what Sislak was trying to do. Sislak was the one who was coming off the front foot. He was the one kind of dictating the pace. And McCarthy was trying to counter what was coming at him. And even when he was on the front foot, he was moving forward, but he was stalking his opponent. It wasn't really throwing too much, right? And I was just like, man, what's going on? Like, yeah, he had some good moments, but it was some hesitant moments throughout the fight. And it was a fight where it just looked like he was a little uninterested to me, in my opinion. You don't want to fight off the back foot every single round. Nothing good happens when you're fighting off the back foot every single round. Not everybody can fight off the back foot, right? And so it was just you know, a little tough to see because I think McCarthy is a good boxer, right? And so in that fight, I just didn't see a confident version of him. Once he got to the sixth round, he looked a little bit gassed out to me. And that's when things started to really go downhill for him because the movement started to slow down. He was fighting off the back foot and his hands was dropping a little bit more until eventually he got caught on the rope and Sislak unloaded a whole barrage of shots on him that dropped him the first time. And even when he was on the canvas, man, the ref was counting seven, eight. It looked like he was looking at his corner, was trying to figure out, do I really want to go back into this fight? It, I thought he was going to stay down to full 10 count, but he gets back up. Sislak comes forward and unloads a barrage of shots on him again and his corner throw in the towel. Even when McCarthy was walking back to his corner, man, he wasn't upset. He just looked tired and just looked discouraged and deflated. 
I, that's just my speculation. I could be completely wrong, but he did not look like his old self to me. So it makes things interesting to see which version is going to show up on the night. So who wins? I think if this was the version of McCarthy that fought Chris Billiam Smith the first time, I would lean him to win this fight. That was a very good version of him, a good showing of him, even though he lost the fight. But that was a version that believed that he could win any single fight that he was in. Not saying he doesn't believe that now. I'm just going off my speculation on what I'm seeing. But... I like Siobhan Clark to win this fight, man, by stoppage. I think Clark is going to be more physical. I think Clark is going to be more explosive. The athleticism in his favor and the speed are going to be mixed with the power. I think it's going to be too much at some point in this fight. The, the, the fights that McCarthy fought after his loss to William Smith were against two opponents where he was supposed to win, supposed to have a good showing. Their records were a little lackluster. They weren't very good. Right, It was just for the confidence to get back into the win column and to build again. And so I just, I don't think it's going to be his night, man. Maybe he can drag it out because Clark hasn't fought a 12-round fight before. And McCarthy has the skill and the ability when he's at his height, when he's at his peak, to be able to put on a great boxing performance. But I don't know if he has it, man, on the fights that I've seen previously. I don't know if it's there from a mental standpoint. Physically, yeah, he can win this fight, but I'm not sure mentally that he's as confident as he once was. I like Siobhan Clark to win this fight by late stoppage. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Man, I appreciate each of you. Shout out to everybody holding down the membership section. I appreciate each of you as well. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video, this time do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And we'll definitely see you next time.